second day. Um, as you see, it will be something about uh, QA, quality assurance. Uh, I don't say it will be too much practical, also a little bit uh, theoretical, but uh, you will see. Um, I'm not that type of uh, speaker who like to be in suit with ties, so there will be some funny parts. Please just, if you feel it is funny, just in that case only. Uh, so who am I? I'm Balaz, uh, originally from Hungary, but uh, I live in Brussels for almost two years. Um, if you just follow the Europe Cup, uh, on Sunday there will be a huge match against Belgium. Uh, please support us if you are not Belgian, because we are like a small country. Uh, I'm also a technical lead and a QA specialist in the European Commission uh, in the IT department called Widget. Uh, and also there is like a nickname of mine, because uh, in the first line I like reject everything. So not your questions, I try to don't reject them, but uh, that's why I'm like Captain Reject. So um, how should I start? Um, most probably you remember that nice guy uh, who said something really important, which is also important for the QA. As he said, life as if you were to die tomorrow, but learn as if you were to, li to live forever. Why I say it? Because this time is the sixth one uh, when I present that session. Actually, um, it's a little bit personal thing. So the whole session is like my child. Um, what is about QA in this session? I always try to be really open for your feedback, even in email, even after the, the session, whenever you want. Um, and always changing the slides, make a little bit QA on it. So that's why, as you see, there are some uh, previous ones. Uh, one of them were presented by, uh, by a colleague of mine who, who just uh, had a small baby at 2 a.m. today, so send our greetings to, to him, please. Okay, uh, as I said, lifelong learning. Really important, always try to be better. I'm not talking about you will be the best. If you are already, please join us. Um, but those are the steps. What you just need to follow, I will show some um, tools, let's say, what you can use uh, during the daily work. But um, I don't say all of them are useful if you are in a one-man company or if you are uh, in a big company, as a developer, even as a QA person. But um, those are nice tools, I think. What is quality assurance? As the Wikipedia says, it was written there, it's not only about software development. So all of the things what are delivered needs to be checked. What it means? It means to increase the quality, it means to increase the maintainability, and it also means to be a little bit better. What we say in the commission, I also need to uh, read it because it's like a little bit weird, but uh, the process, the QA process by which subcontracted projects, we are in Drupal, so features and sub teams, are being validated to comply to the FTFIS platform. FTFIS means flexible platform for internet services. Flexible in the term of being, trying to be flexible, um, but if you just remember, Captain Reject, we are not that flexible. So that's why our first rule is what Gandalf said, um, but there are some issues. Because not all of the people, that was very good, thank you. <laughs> so 
not all of the people, actually, like none of them, uh, like our service. There is the project manager. Um, yeah, actually, he really hates us. Because we are the only one who blocks the delivery, who blocks the deadline. A little bit annoying. There is also the developer, uh, as you are, not always like us, but a little bit hate us. Because we are the only ones who also block him. I'm not talking about he doesn't work for Active, but obviously for a developer perspective, uh, not the most important part to produce high quality code. Sometimes. But when we throw it back, he has issue. So that's why he hates us. Uh, also the client, I don't know one of you uh, know him, but um, he also quite hate us because um, what we do to block his project, um, it makes more money on his side. Need to pay more for the developers, for the project managers, for everyone. Uh, because we do what we do. After a while, we in the QA team start to hate us. As Golan was, um, our mind is like a little bit broken. We try to be flexible. Um, sometimes it is pos uh, possible, sometimes it doesn't. So there are some exceptions, but for the automation, shouldn't be. But all of the things what I said are real and valid in the short run. Because in the long term, everyone loves us. Maybe when we already died, but in really long term, they will, I really believe on it, uh, they will love us. Because we are the only one uh, who make sure the project will be as high as the client, the developer, the project manager, the cleaning lady, everyone wants to see it. So in long term, but why the quality assurance is always in the short term? Sorry to say it, but a pain in the ass. Because there are things what are not followed by the members of the project. Like the standards. Uh, yesterday there was a really nice um, presentation by Xano, um, who explained all of the DSRs. Um, actually, what we need to follow, seriously, everything is written on Drupal.org or any other websites. Not that rapid science. I mean, coding standards. If you just follow it, you will, you will make your project maintainable reusable, things like this. Also the code documentations, just put the minimum there. No need to explain the whole Bible. Just seriously, the minimum. Also really important, a good, a really good project management software. If you work alone, I tell you, also you need a project management software like Jira, like other things, just to make sure you will follow a clear workflow, even in Agile, even um, in Waterfall, or any other um, methodology. But really important to have tools what can help you. The tools are for you, not you are for the tools. I know in the beginning you need to learn how the tool, how this or that tool works, but after a while, just like the um, version control system, in the beginning, you were like suffering. But then, you felt the positive things on it. Um, the next slide will show something really important because in the QA, the measurement is not that easy. As Robert C. Martin said, in his clean code book, 
um, you can measure the code and the quality of it with the number of the, yeah, what the fuck. Uh, if the source code has only a few, but you just don't understand, you can ask, you can even file a ticket for it. But like, if all of the lines are having really, God knows, heavy operations or just things what are just not clear, you will have a lot of questions like, dude, what's that? Uh, so it means that code is really bad. So let me show you some tools what you can use in the daily work um, to increase that quality and decrease the number of those three letters. So the first is uh, the PHP mess detector. Mm, anyone knows it, maybe? Raise the hand. Okay. Um, so it's a really nice tool to try to identify what big is the mess on the on the project what you work on. Uh, there is an OOP OO um, infrastructure before uh, behind it. What you can explain, what you can work with, what you can just use. Also from command line. Um, <laughs> wait a sec. Once it happened in a project in the commission, uh, when the smart developer uh, sent a bunch of code, like thousands of lines. And normally, because we have a quite clear and standardized QA process, we do uh, a code review like lines by lines. It's quite boring. But then I noticed there was the code. Please. If you have any issues, raise your hand. Yeah, the default case uh, won't be executed. Am I right? So if the E string returns a logical, a boolean, the case true can be executed, right? The case false also can be executed, but the default doesn't make any sense. So I was the one who made the QA and I asked kindly the developer, please refactor it and use if, what makes sense. So that was the next version. <laughs> please don't clap your hand. Uh, so I again asked the smart developer, who is less smart than my f smartphone, but uh, I asked him, please, Think a bit. The third case, the else one, won't be executed, am I right? He didn't reply anything, but the next version was like this. Yes, he removed the whole function because realized it was a dead function. It was called by somewhere else, what was called by somewhere else, but that one was never called. So he removed the whole uh, source code. Uh, yeah, it's a nice solution at least. You see how hard is life in the, in the QA. Next tool, uh, copy-paste detector. Someone knows it? N you are the only one, cool. Do you want to join us? <laughs> you should. Uh, so the copy-paste detector um, is also a nice tool, what you can just use from um, command line, and you see, mm, spots in the source code in a project what are like really just copy. So what it means, uh, sorry for the WordPress developers if anyone is, um, but I use the WordPress just to just to see something. I'm not talking about the, the Drupal is, is a perfect software. It also has issues, but uh, yeah, the WordPress does have a lot. So um, it just spot those things in the source code, what can be refactored, put there to a dedicated function or even to a dedicated class and make it reusable. Next one uh, is the PHP docs. 
what can generate for you the whole documentation of a project from only from the source code. Uh, okay, it doesn't visible. Okay, um, so there are things, but I also don't see. Anyway, um, if you just use the PHP docs, it will generate a bunch of HTML. Um, what will be something like uh, what is on api.drupal.org. Um, the reason why we should use uh, the this tool um, is to make sure the documentation in term of technology will be somewhere. Maybe in the past, hopefully not today, but in the past you noticed uh, issues where you had a project, you were not the first one on it, and uh, someone previously uh, made the project, uh, worked with it, not in the standardized way, but in like, like the aliens works. And uh, you had no idea how it works. You had no, any, any, seriously, no idea uh, how should it be touched, how you need to start to work on it. So at least when you have documentation, maybe also with some user manuals, really important. Uh, PHP doc doesn't provide it. But um, needs to have something. Next one. Yeah. Who doesn't know it? Cool. So the code sniffer and uh, a small uh, child of it, the code beautifier and fixer, um, one of the most important tool in the QA because it can check all of the coding standard violations. The CBF, the code beautifier and fixer, also can fix them. So obviously everyone use um, an ID like PHP, Storm, NetBeans, whatever, uh, what also can check the coding standards, also can fix it, blah, blah, blah. But um, if you work in a big team, always there will be someone who doesn't follow the coding standards. I tell you always. So in this case, you also can use the PHP CBS and CBF to fix his issues or at least explain it to him why he should use a better ID or those things. The last one is a little bit big software product, the PHP metrics. Um, for small companies, I don't recommend to use it. Not just because it generates like really big things, but um, in a small company, just based on my experience, uh, there won't be any person who will understand what is the, for instance, cyclomatic complexity or uh, um, how, how you can uh, make sure the abstraction layer will work at, uh, as it has to, things like this. Um, but in a big company, Hopefully, there will be a technical lead uh, who will understand how it should work. If he won't, please join us and, you know. Um, so this tool can scan your whole project. Also with the Drupal core, really important to see how complex is it. Uh, Drupal 8 is really complex. Maybe you already noticed. Um, but if you put their custom source code, I highly rec recommend to use this tool only for the customizations. No need to scan the whole project. But there is another topic in QA, which is the testing. Uh, who use tests? Okay, what type of, like, PHP unit. Uh, we are in Drupal, so simple test. Um, how it works? There is one methodology called TDD, test-driven development. It says, first write the test, 
then write the code what passes the test. Then write again the test and write the code what passes the test. Things like this. So um, it's a little bit uh, annoying in the beginning, just what I mentioned uh, with the tools. It's really a new tool uh, if, you, if you've never worked with it. Um, and the iteration, the number of the iterations will be really huge because when you just write a code, what doesn't pass one test, what was passed before, um, it will be a mess. But after a while, you will use it. So um, yeah, this is one uh, perspective of testing. The second one is a little bit more modern, which is the B hat. Um, the methodology called B uh, BDD, Behavior Driven Development, it says you don't need to work with the basic things like units, but what is important in a project, also in a, um, in a website, the functionality, the behaviors. So if there is, for instance, a behavior to to check, uh, not to check, but um, for instance, to log, log in on a site. Uh, it is typically a use case. It is implemented somehow based on Drupal. We know how it works, uh, but it should be implemented in a scenario. All of the scenarios can be scanned when a project will be delivered, and if everything is green, you can be happy because it means all of your functionalities, what will deliver, what will be on the live site, uh, just works. But there is a third part of the QA, what let's say, um, I show a lot of um, QA presentations in the past, but no one told me uh, the third tool which is you, not that technical in the term of how you are working on, but what you can do for your project is the focus. If you work, just focus on what you do. For me, the metal music really helps a lot. I just put my ear earphones to my ears, everything is blocked around me, I just work. Maybe I just QA something, maybe I develop something, things like this. Also with the focus, really important if you have a big issue, try to separate it to smaller ones. No need to reinvent the hot water in one step, maybe in 10 steps, it can be even warmer. Um, the human part of the QA, um, when you QA your code, so you are alone, there is no help who can give you a hand, really important to be, to be open-minded, to read and write code, really important to know how it works. Also, there is a um, quite nice um, methodology from the XP, from the experience, uh, from the um, extreme programming, called the uh, peer or pair programming. That tools uh, is about one working station, like a computer, and two people. One is writing a code, the second one is helping him. Then they change. The previously second one will write the code and the previously first one will help him. Um, there are studies who says this type of tool, let's say, really help when one of the one of the person from the two is a junior and the second one is an expert because the learn and teach. I have a lot of experiences when a junior 
really junior with one at most two years of experiences in Drupal teach me a lot. And I learned a lot from juniors. I really like to teach them, but to be open-minded, to show you as, as someone who is really open for even the juniors' uh, opinion about something, maybe he will be wrong. Don't worry. The only one what you need to memorize from that slide is the learn and teach. If you are alone, also. Um, yeah. <laughs> How I can change for the next slide because I will start to start to speak about our project called Next Europa. Um, actually. The fact um, we are in the public sector, so what it means, um, sometimes we, especially in the QA team, really need to fight for our rights. Because, and that's the next one, it is everywhere. So the problem is, if we want to do something, at least three, four, sometimes more, steps what we have to do. So that's why I don't think the whole public sector works as it has to. Sometimes it works really fast, most of the cases it doesn't. So what is Next Europa? Yeah, web content management system. God knows why it's web, but yeah, we are on the web. Uh, so we are in the European Commission, there are like 40 plus uh, DGs, Directorate Generals, uh, you can imagine them like uh, departments, let's say, but all of those departments has sub-departments. So everywhere, almost everywhere, uh, there are IT sub-departments, let's say, not just we are in the digit, which is the, the big IT department. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy. Um, welcome in the public sector. So the whole um, project is based on Drupal 7, which is a multi-site one. Um, right now it's around 130 subsites. Um, in this year, in the beginning in this year, uh, we had like around 90, a little bit less than 100. The plan until uh, the end of this year uh, to make it double. So we will have like around 200. Um, a lot of sites are really small, uh, small ones with, um, let's say, just a few content, uh, a few users, uh, mostly for, um, for the internal uh, stuff in the commission, but there are really big ones. Um, so that's why I, I say that the complexity of the sites are really different. And who are on the on the Next Europa platform? Uh, there is a platform team. As I know now, they have like nine or ten developers uh, with two project owner uh, and one Scrum master. Uh, also in Brussels, and uh, let's say the small management part uh, sits in uh, Luxembourg. We have like this issue, so the remote control. And uh, there is another one, the maintenance and the QA team. Uh, all of the newcomers who arrive to the commission, to the digit, to work on Next Europa or one of the subsite in the future, uh, will start uh, in that team. So if you want to work for the commission, you will meet with me. Um, because I am leading in technical uh, term this team nowadays. So what we do in the maintenance, yeah, we are like now seven people. It, it really depends on the newcomers. Sometimes they, they uh, go to another DG, sometimes they stay really crazy. It's like a roller coaster. Um, so what we do? The first one means uh, what you see is what you deliver. What it means? Uh, there are a lot of subsites who has a dedicated contractor, sometimes only a webmaster. 
and they have to deliver everything what they want to change on the sub site. So they don't have obviously the UID one on the uh, production site, but they have some rights, some permissions there. Uh, but obviously they should use a development machine or uh, a playground, we call it playground, it's like a staging environment um, to, to deliver things in features and also the, the custom um, look and feel thingy uh, in a sub team. What we also have, uh, there is a standardized QA process, uh, what is already semi-automatized. Uh, it means some of the parts are already checked uh, by continuous PHP, I will speak about. Um, some of them are really manual and we need to still check them. Um, what we also do is uh, supporting the subsites. So there are subsites on the platform um, where the contractor, the previous developer, developer teams already left. So in this case, we are the only one who won't do the QA, but we'll do some improvements, but really the minimum. Also for the platform, for that team, uh, what is like bigger than we are. Um, so we, we also try to, to, to help them, uh, but really small part. Um, and also what I uh, mentioned, uh, improvements for the subsites. What I said in the beginning, um, a good project management system, software, let's say, uh, is really important to organize your daily work. We in the main maintenance team, um, a little bit Scrum, a little bit uh, Kanban, just a little bit Scrumban, and also a little bit waterfall. So we are like really inventing our way how we how we work. Um, unfortunately, it, it is not that visible. Anyway, uh, those are the columns what we have. The first is the to-do list. Um, if you see or not, I don't have any issues there, finally. Um, there is the build and fix when we start to work on uh, one of the new improvements for a subsite. Uh, one of the biggest column is the QA. Uh, when we have a QA issue for a subsite, for a delivery, uh, we just put the ticket directly there and uh, keep it there for weeks sometimes. Uh, my record is 13 rounds on the same one. It was not the same uh, project what I just uh, showed you uh, in the beginning with the switch if thingy. Uh, there are even even worse. Uh, also, the functional test. Normally, we don't check the functionality on a subsite during a QA process, because most of the cases we don't know how it should work. What are the behaviors? What are the use cases? Uh, but the subsite and also the owner knows it. So when a QA, like a technical QA, finished, we just put it to the functional test, deli um, deploy everything on uh, on the staging environment called the uh, playground, and uh, they will check it and they will maybe found some issues. Then everything starts again, another QA round. Then we again deploy it. So it's this is what I mentioned: bureaucratical system. Um, then when everyone is happy with it, we will put it to the production site. Um, we don't close actually tickets, so we just put that to the release note, which is uh, almost the last one or delivery column, and the client has to close it. After two, three days when there is like no reaction, we close it because it means the site works at least. Um, a new improvement for us uh, because previously we used uh, the Stash, which is an Atlassian product, just like the Jira, um, to, to, how can I explain it, um, to follow the subsites, at least the source code. Uh, so the Stash is like a GitHub uh, platform managing uh, Git-based, and as I know, SVN as well, um, repositories. In the beginning and nowadays as well, unfortunately, 
uh, we have like two almost the same repository. The one is managed by us, and the second one is like free for the contractor. He can do what he wants. Then, when he, it was the same in Stash and also in um, in GitHub. Uh, when he thinks everything is ready, he will make a pull request from his fork to our managed uh, repository, and the whole QA craziness will start. Um, we already use some uh, automation on delivering um, the the source codes. Let me check how many minutes I do have. Okay, I didn't start it. Okay, um, so um, the important part there are automations, also with PHP CS, also uh, with some um, special EC rules. Maybe some of you knows uh, how the field API works with the logged uh, property. It locks everything on on the UI. They are not able to change the field settings on the UI. Really, really nice. Um, there is no possibility to do it on on the front end, on the UI. But uh, just set one in the code in the in the feature. Uh, and they won't be able to change things in the in the fields. Um, the deployment procedure is based on not Jenkins, not Travis, but continuous PHP, uh, which is the first one. Um, continuous PHP is really a good, a little bit huge uh, software. Uh, what can help you to deliver uh, everything based on the continuous delivery principles. Uh, also, we use the GitHub for like half a year. Uh, do you, someone knows what is Zapr? Okay, Minader. It's like a, a voting system uh, still on the um, on the platform, and uh, they like vote for the for the pull requests. Um, one pull request needs at least two uh, thumbs up, and uh, then it it will be able to um, merge. Also the thing, um, which is like a um, build system a bit, uh, when you can um, define different targets, like deployment targets as well, um, and make sure it will work, because normally if, if you do something manually, first you, you will get bored, uh, then there is the human part. You you also can mistakes, can make mistakes. Uh, so thing is for building things, uh, and also the composer. I hope I I don't need to explain it. Um, and just in couple of sentences, in Drupal 8, in the core on Drupal.org, there are already things what was not on Drupal 7 and previously uh, before the DrupalCon in uh, Barcelona, um, when we started to yeah, implement things on the Drupal CI and also um, checking the whole Drupal 8 core, there are a lot of issues, at least with the, with the coding standard violations. Um, feel free to join. Uh, if you need more information about it, how it works, what are the issues, what we still have, uh, don't hesitate to ask me or, or Peter Franson, who uh, who is taking the, um, the automation, testing, whatever, uh, workshop somewhere over there. Uh, and also the coder module, if you remember, uh, it was only a module in uh, like one year, a bit more. Um, it was a little bit transferred to something else. I just call it monster because everything is there. Um, and uh, the guy who maintain it, um, Klaus, Klausi. Um, unfortunately, he is not here today, but uh, he was in Vienna because he is a Austrian guy. Um, but um, he did some really nice improvements. I highly recommend to check it. Um, last sentence, I'd like to uh, say a big thanks or for all of the uh, sponsors, what you just see it. 
Um, and if you have any questions, please don't QA me, but let's start the Q&A. You can drop an email if you have issues. Thank you so much.